You can also play with tea dyeing um, if that's something that you haven't done before. Um, or if you've done it in the past, you can bring that into this process. Um, so you can use different kinds of tea. I like to use black tea and um, that's the easiest one that I find to use. Um, different teas will give different effects, but you can experiment. Um, this is just a few, you can see the tea bags in here. Um, I put maybe five or six black tea bags in the container and just poured hot water over it like I was steeping a cup of tea. And I've let this sit for, I don't know, maybe half an hour. The longer you steep the tea, the darker the tea will get. The nice thing about working with black tea is it has tannins in it that make it so you don't have to um, pre-treat fabric in order to get the color to stick. Some other teas I've heard, um, you do have to do some preparation for the fabric to in order to keep the color there. But with this wabi-sabi approach, you know, if the colors do fade, that can be a way to explore and play with impermanence, which can be wonderful. Um, so what I'm going to do, and you can play with this in a, I mean, in whatever ways come to you, um, you can just take individual pieces of fabric that you have. So this is some of the vintage um, Indian cantha cloth remnants. Um, dyeing with the tea can be a nice way to subdue some brighter colors like this if you want, um, or just see what happens. So you can just take pieces of fabric and put them right in there. You can see, oh, there it goes. And the dyeing will happen, pr start pretty much right away. You can leave it in there, um, though, for as long as you like. I experiment with, sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's multiple hours. So play around with the length of time and you'll see different effects. And if the fabric is like the, these little parts that are sticking up out of the tea bath a little bit, that'll be a little bit lighter. Um, you can fold it up or crumple pieces too, or even like wrap um, rubber bands around it and then dip it in. Um, so you can experiment with that. I'm just going to let that sit in there. Um, you can also take some of, if you've explored the wrinkled paper, this has some of my mark making explorations on it. Just going to hold that up. And you can do dip dyeing too, so where the whole thing it doesn't go in. Um, just hold it there for a little bit or clip it like on the side with a, oops, here you go. Clip it on the side with like a clothespin or something. And then you can get some interesting effects and you can already see the color, how much it changes right away. I'm just going to let that sink down or you know, play around with how you leave it in the in the tea bath. Um, another one that I, another way you can use it if you want is to um, do this over stitching as well. So this was from a page of a book that I had disassembled and I wanted to just see what the tea would do to the black and white. So you can dip that in, let that hang out for a while. And the other cool thing that you can do if you want is submerge an entire book in the tea. So that's what I've done with this book here. So it was um, the brighter um, cantha cloth. I think it was similar. Let me grabbing the other piece here. Similar to that. Um, I just decided to submerge the whole thing and see what happened. And it really brought all the tones together of the different materials that were in the book. And you can see some of the variation in the toning there. And this was really bright black and white. So you can put, if you put the whole book in, the whole thing will kind of come together in an interesting way. Um, let's do it with this one. So I have this book that I did a bunch of stitching on and various experiments. And I feel like um, I'm ready to try it and see what happens. I'm just gonna push it down in there.
and this is <laughs> doing this kind of thing with the whole completed book really takes a lot of courage because just like all of this, you really don't know what's going to happen, but you're really choosing to commit to this <laughs> as the next stage anyways. But I like to play with that. Um, if it feels scary to, to do that or you don't want to ruin the book, um, that's fine if you choose not to. But if you do try, choose to just experiment and see what happens, you could always then... You know, let's say you pull this book out and it dries and you just don't love it for some reason. You could always pull the pages apart, disassemble the book, and then continue the creative process from there. So maybe you pull apart individual pages like I did on this black and white book um, that I mentioned. That's one of the other pages that went in there. And then you start to, you know, go back into the other techniques and maybe pull from other materials you've got and use that page from this bound book that you've pulled apart for a jumping for a spark or catalyst for another book. So it really can be endless. So that's where I really like to remind myself to take those creative risks and just try something um, even when that fear shows up. Or maybe you're just someone who's like, yeah, I'll try it, whatever. <laughs> I just want to see what happens. And that's great too. So let's pull some of these out and let's see how they're looking. And obviously it's only been a few minutes. So um, we'll see. I'm grabbing my rag. Well, here. Yeah. I'm just going to give it a little. Oh, it feels nice. The, the water is, is uh, nice and warm. Wow, that really changed the whole tone of the book. Before it was so bright and full of contrast and already it just you know, quieted it down. Wow, yeah. And the fun thing too, if you submerge the whole book, sometimes like here, the tea didn't quite reach this whole piece. So you can get some interesting dappling Yeah, I like that. So that could, you know, I could end there or I could put it back in the tea bath and let it keep hanging out. Let's pull these other ones out and see. Oh, that's such also another Wabi Sabi moment. Just enjoying the impermanence, that nice warmth on my hands. That's part of the process. The smell of the tea, also impermanence. My, sen my senses that are getting engaged, my body. And then those experiences are floating away, uh, but they've still impacted me. And that's all part of this experience too. Yeah, to totally different. Wow. Look at the tone difference. So this is what it was. Wow. Amazing. Let's see. Let's see how our what happened to our paper. And I find with a paper, once it's wet too, depends on the kind of paper, um, you might just have to be careful pulling it apart because it might start to rip. This is um, Japanese rice paper. Ooh, I like those tones with the black. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, cool. Oh, I like that. So let that dry. And this was the piece that had the cantha cloth that had that bright blue. It was beautiful, but I thought, let's see what happens if it gets a little bit more subtle. Oh yeah, it just, again, just kind of made it a little bit quieter, deeper. Hmm. Did I get all of them? Oh yeah, so these are just the tea bags. Um, great. So that's the tea dyeing process. So again, you can, um, you know, experiment with any of these ideas, leave them, try a few for just a few minutes like I did, and then leave some even overnight and see what happens to the tone and try different teas if you'd like and see what happens. And maybe even drink a cup of tea while you're doing it. That would be lovely as well. Enjoy.